What's up, Sussex? Here we are on another phenomenal show. Our guest today is Brian Shoot. Brian, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. It's great. It's a Friday. Uh, my kids, what they call it, is a, a family weekend coming up. So I'm, I'm excited. Here awesome. Awesome. Before we start, I want to acknowledge that you are a state representative. Thank you for your service. Thank you. That, that, that means a lot. I appreciate that. Awesome. So let's go ahead and, and jump in. So first question, first question. Who are you? That's a good question. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad you sent me this in advance. I, uh, <laughs> I had to think about it a little bit. Uh, I, you know, I think at the heart of things, uh, I'm really a, an entrepreneur, an innovator. I've done a lot of things over uh, the course of my you know 15 year career, whether it be in news, government, small business owner. But I think it, in all three of those aspects, I've really tried to think of. How can I do things differently? How can I challenge things to make them better for people on the ground? And I think it's that entrepreneurial heart that um, really has guided me through through all all of my decision making. So I would say an entrepreneur. Awesome. Um, talk to us about the friend of the people. I've heard about yeah. this. The friend of the people. <laughs> Who's my this dad's going to love this, man. Okay, my dad's awesome. going to love this. Um, so my, my dad, we, we give him the nickname, the, the friend of the people. Um, growing up, we would, we'd be out to, to dinner or, or him and I would be out on a walk. He, he was big into to fitness, went to the gym, you know, six, seven days a week. Um, and he would just, we'd walk by somebody and say, hey, how's it going? And, um, and I'd say, dad, who is that? Who was that? And, well, I don't know. And so I... <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I just thought they needed a wave. I thought they needed to, to say hi. And, and he was always one who uh, would always be welcoming to everyone, would always say hello to everyone, would always talk to a stranger when he was in line at the supermarket. And, and the interesting part is he never came from uh, when he, he moved from Philadelphia uh, right before I was born, my mother and him. And they didn't come to, to a welcoming environment. Um, they actually um, came into an environment where people would not even show them how houses would not even um, sell them a house because they were from a, another state and oh, they right. didn't want them to move into Sussex County and um, I, I will always remember uh, Connie Fox which she's still a realtor uh, but back in the you know 40 years ago when right. they were looking for a house down here she was the only one that would show them around and uh, luckily showed them Milford and um, they were able to stay and, and coming out of that environment he still was friendly with everybody wanted to get to know everybody he would join the you know JCs, join the uh, the local uh, food bank, and 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 volunteered his time. Was a coach for myself and my sister, and uh, so that's why we always called him the friend of the people. And he, and he's still like that today. That is awesome, yeah. man. Another question for you: How do you use your role of a entrepreneur, business person, and politician to serve the community? Yeah, I you know it's. I, I try not to get stuck in one of those roles. So when, when somebody meets me, usually the first thing that they know about me is that I'm a state representative. Um, but I don't let that define who I am. Um, I don't wake up every morning and say I'm a state representative and, and I'm going to do something through the government to uh, you know, create laws. Um, I try to look at my community as a whole, what are the needs, um, whether that be clean water or more uh, recreation for kids or more more help with with families in our area and I say how can I serve them is it through my private business is it through uh, the newspaper that I uh, run is it through government is it through the nonprofits that I have a relationship with so I think that entrepreneurial spirit of saying look it doesn't always have to be government or it doesn't always have to be private business but it's kind of a mixture of those things that make a community run and it's that that innovative partnerships that really get us collaborating together and, and making a community strong. So that, that's where I try to try to tackle my everyday challenges. Understood. In 2014, mm -hmm. you were elected as the youngest mayor in Milford. Talk to us about that experience. Yeah, so in 2014, I was uh, 29 years old. Um, I ran to be the mayor of Milford. I had a newspaper business called Milford Live, which I started myself uh, when I was 26. And it was an amazing experience. I really thought that through my work as a um, 
newspaper publisher and, and owner of that newspaper. I had learned a lot about the community. I had talked with so many different people outside of government, um, business owners, uh, nonprofit uh, individuals in the nonprofit world, and people just on the street and listen to their challenges and, and listen to what they thought were the solutions. So I thought that was a good space to come from to, to be able to listen to the people for um, three years straight every single day through my work to be able to take on some of those larger challenges. What I really felt was my role and why I wanted to be the mayor was, again, going back to my, my father and my mother's experience of you know, people not wanting to help them because they weren't here, uh, from here, uh, down in Sussex County, was there was still those kind of two parties in, in Milford that were um, going against each other, the, the people who had been here for generations and the people who had, uh, the, as they call them, the transplants that yeah. got here. Mm-hmm. And there were the real big challenges that we have, whether they were health care, uh, you know, growing our, our health care through, through Bay Health, our infrastructure, our recreation. And instead of trying to figure out what the opportunities were in these big areas, they were saying, well, we don't want to listen to you because you just got here, or we don't need to listen to you because we have the ideas, you've, you've been here for too long. And um, there was so much experience and so much knowledge to take from the people who had been here from generations. And the people who had come from other places had uh, working experience from Fortune 500 companies, from um, from huge banks in, in New York City and, and, and all these other places that if you really combine their talents, I knew that we could we could meet our challenges. And that was that was my goal. And that that's that was my approach when I was uh, elected mayor as well. Now, obviously, being 29, that really um, kind of shook um, what I would call the, the old boy network uh, in Milford, the, the, the former mayor, which I, I loved him to death and I, his family was a big supporter of mine, but he had been there for uh, 30 years. Okay. So it was something for people to get used to. They were used to a mayor being there for 30 years. Uh, and at one time he was as young as, as I was as well. Um, so it's interesting. Now we have a mayor and, and he's thinking about retiring after three terms and people are like, they're still going back to saying, wait, you have to be there for 30 years. Um, but I had people say, you know, what does this young guy know? He's just out of college. He just started a business a few years ago. And I really had to show up up every single day and and put in the hard work while I was there we created a new executive team we hired a new city manager a new uh, chief of police and a new um, um, public works manager as well so it was really a trial by fire for me at 29 to put together an executive team for a, a, the fourth largest city in, in Delaware and I and I reveled in it I mean I took my uh, I was at the office every single day during that period of, of putting together that executive team and really took the opportunity to listen to people in state government in local government that knew a lot more than me and and uh, learn uh, and, and take their experience of what I could do with with my term. You mentioned Milford Live. Mm-hmm. What is it? Yeah. And what is your goal? Yeah. So Milford Live, uh, I started the company when I was 26. It is a digital newspaper for the Milford area. It reaches about a 20-mile drive time. I started for two reasons. The first was that uh, at the time, 12 years ago, um, there was not a lot of local news on a digital format in the Milford area. Um, Digital had just started up. And there was also the second reason, uh, a lot of the hard copy news was police and fire on the front page. I knew that a lot of positive things were happening in our community. And there was also a lot of statewide news in our local papers. And I wanted to tell the story of what was going on in our our schools, our local businesses, um, our local government, and things that that would affect and impact people on a daily basis, not maybe that was uh, removed from their their daily lives. So um, I built that business. I actually sold that business uh, three years ago to a gentleman up in Wilmington. And he hired me to start Delaware Live, which is just a, an expanded version. And the goal there is to um, take national uh, news out of Delaware papers, 
uh, or at least out of our paper, and talk about things that are impactful for Delaware. And so talk about um, the General Assembly instead of what's going on in Congress in D.C., talk about what's going on in Delaware schools instead of, uh, you know, national education, uh, talk about what's going on on the street level in, in Wilmington and Rehoboth and Dover and Milford, and um, expand that localized, hyperlocal impact to educate people what's going on in the community and get them to be a, a voice uh, within their communities to hopefully become active. We've uh, also, so we have Milford Live still going strong. Um, Delaware Live has been around for three years. We also have Town Square Delaware, which is a digital paper in the Wilmington, Hocus, and Pike Creek area. That that started about 10 years ago with a local family up there. And then we also have Delaware Live Sports. It, it, it is uh, a live streaming YouTube channel where we live stream about three to five uh, high school, Delaware high school sports every single week. So really focus on Delaware connecting people with other people in Delaware and, and how can they get involved and become educated on things that, that are going to impact them today, this week, this month, and not so focused on the 24-7 national news scene. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for, for that service because it's greatly needed. And especially in Milford, um, I remember the days when you first started with Milford Live. It, it was the thing. That's where, and still to this day, that's where we go to get our local news. So what is a guiding quote that you favor? Yeah, I was thinking about this. I, there's really two in my life. The first is by Thomas Jefferson. Um, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more it have I have. Um, that, is, that is key for me because throughout my life, through the ups and downs, through the mountains and the valleys, no matter where I've been, getting up every day, getting up early, going to work, pushing hard as I can, whether it be in, in professional life or private life, has always led me to success. Now that not always immediate success, but I have seen that success grow because I always get up and I do the work, no matter how I'm feeling, no matter what's going on in my life. And the second one is, is, is kind of related, and it's something that comes from myself, is that do things for the right reason and success will follow. And I remember thinking that when I started Milford Live. You know, I, was, I lived in a, a little tiny apartment uh, in Milford. I was driving, uh, I love telling this story, I was driving a, a Ford Focus that was, I don't even know how old it was at the time. It, it was in 2010. It literally... Uh, had broken down to the point where it did not go in reverse. So <laughs> so I had to like yeah. find the right parking spot where I could either turn around or I had to like put it in reverse and literally push it out of uh -huh. the, so, and I was starting a business at the same time, like, but I, but I couldn't afford to fix it. So I kept telling myself, I, I left a job to start this. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept telling myself, you do this for the right reason. You know, it, it, it's, you're not going to make the money. So do it for the right reason, educating the community, putting positive things, letting people know about the positive things that are going on in Milford and success will follow that. And within the first year, you know, I made uh, just a little bit more, from Milford Live um, than I made from the job that I was leaving. Wow. Now, now, granted, the job I was leaving, I didn't make much either. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think that's still true today. You know, I, I see that if I do things for the right reason, uh, the success will follow. And again, it's not always immediate. That's it, right. it, that's right. it usually isn't immediate 90% right. right. <laughs> of the time. But it's kind of that foundation of just you know, you've got to have that 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 foundation of, of ethics and morals and, and what you believe is true. And that foundation over time will keep you on the right path. See, that excites me. Man. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. That's because man, that's what I live by. Yeah. That excites me. And that's what gives me hope. Yeah. You know, and just like you said, you know, success is not immediate. But I know that if I'm doing the right things, I'm I'm living by purpose. Yeah. And I know eventually I'll get mine. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Bro. It always happens. That's what's up. <laughs> Next question. Last question. What book are you currently reading? So I'm reading a book right now called um, So Good um, They Can't Ignore You. And it's about honing and sharpening the skills that you have. 
Um, it's a really interesting take on the old adage of people believe that you have to have a passion. You got to follow your passion and you're asking the world, what are you going to give me so I can follow that passion? And it's saying that's the wrong way to think. The right way to think is what skills do I have or what skills do I need? How can I focus and sharpen those skills and how can I give those skills out to the world? And once I do that, that will create capital for myself to be able to expand and to improve and whatever that passion is will find me and a passion will be given to me and it's, it's really a powerful book and you know that that really is is something that continues on you know those skills sharpen but they also change as well right now i was i was talking to somebody the other day and i i believe that kind of my three things are uh data analysis communications and um being able to interpret uh, finances and you know data analysis just being able to look at what's going on in you know it could be in a relationship it could be in uh, your business it could be in uh, the social sciences of kind of where our culture is going being able to take that data and actually interpret it to, to understand what's going on on the ground level and i think that's really important for me right now and i'm, I'm starting to get better at that um, Obviously, communications for me, I'm a writer, my heart, um, I write every single day. So I will take an hour out of my day and just sit down with no distractions, no phone, uh, when the kids are at school in the middle of my day, and I'll just write. And sometimes it's just something that's in my head. Sometimes it's something to do with work, but it sharpens my skill of taking what's in here and putting it through my pen onto a piece of paper. Um, and then uh, financial literacy, and this is one that, you know, I, I uh, know about you know i can look at a PL sheet i can look at a cash flow sheet but sitting with people who know how to interpret data with finances and get it immediately and saying how do you do that you know i want to get to that point you know I, I can sit and i can look at statements and it'll take me a while to come up with kind of a, a plan and where to go and i can get to that same end point but my focus and where i want to sharpen right now is I want to be a person who looks at it and, and gets it right away and says, okay, I need to make this move in my business. Or when I'm looking at something with, look, with politics and government, okay, this is the move we need to make. And I want to be able to make the decision within minutes instead of within hours. So I'm working with people who are CEOs of huge companies or, um, you know, um, Rick Geisenberg, who is the CFO for the state of Delaware and saying, how do you do that? How do you, and I start working on small projects I have in my own business where I look at the finances and I say, okay, I want to get to, to this little, it, it's not looking at the grand scheme of where are we going this year, but I want to make this little financial move in my business and trying to figure that out. So, you know, sharpening those skills and, and that book has really been able to, to help me do that. That is awesome, man. And now that you mentioned business, I know we wrapping up, yeah. but also a plug for your phenomenal spouse and, and the business that you guys are building. Talk to me a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife, Sherry, we've been married for eight years. She has an amazing business called Fur Baby Pet Resort. And um, that story is just absolutely amazing. Um, we actually met because um, I, I was starting Milford Live, or I had started it for about a year. And she was starting for a baby, um, which was just retail at the time. And I interviewed her about her business starting up. And um, I, I knew I was in trouble about a week later because she had me painting the walls of the new business, <laughs> putting in inventory. And, uh, you know, 10 years later, it's still the same, <laughs> um, you know, after work doing the same thing. Um, but what's really interesting about that business and i have to give her 100 percent of the credit is we were just a small 800 square foot um retail business just you know bowls and leashes and and, and food and, and things of that nature she quickly saw within the first year that the retail alone was not going to make it because you had amazon you had chewy.com people could go to uh conquer pet down the street and, and get the same things so she said we really need to adjust our business and go in a different direction and that was services so we started out with grooming uh, we didn't groom but we hired a groomer then we moved to a bigger building um, that's right next to my sister's fault uh -huh. uh, and we started doing doggy daycare and now we've moved three times uh, we 
finally, after eight years, we purchased a building, and now we're in 10,000 square feet. Okay. We've got uh, 85 dogs a day on average who are in our doggy daycare. And we, so we have doggy daycare, overnight facility, uh, retail still, and then and grooming. So, And 75% of our uh, business now is services. So she was uh, the brains behind seeing from year one that retail was not going to cut it. We needed to change, we needed to develop, we needed to adapt, and uh, the rest has been, uh, you know, a lot of work, obviously, um, but now we're in a building that we own. Uh, we also have another tenant, so we're making residual income from that, and it's been, uh, it's been, a, pro it's been a progress, uh, a progression that I want to share with everyone, because I think that being independent, I think that being a small business owner really is a way that uh, people like my wife and I, who really had, had nothing to begin with, can find independence in, in so many different ways, not just financially, but independent in their day, what they do, their, their own autonomy. And that's what I like to share with people is how can you find autonomy in your own life? And for me, that's happiness. Is If I can choose what I do every single day, that, that personally is, is happiness to me. That's what's up, Brian. Thank yeah, you so yeah, of much. course. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. You. Till next time. Thanks for watching Your Sweet Sussex. And for more episodes, go to IamSussex.com.